So I've just got back today from a lovely trip out. I've been out with both my sisters and we went to a lovely garden centre where I've been stocking up on some new white plants, um, which I'll show you in a minute, to sort of freshen up my front border and the back garden that I have where I'm creating a small white garden there. So what I do normally is I take the plants that I've bought out the back of the car and I pop them at the top of the drive in this area here in front of my garage door um, and that's where I keep all the plants that are sort of destined for the garden and someone was um, asking about this area the other day one of my neighbours um, and she was saying well how does that work how, how do you get the car in well it works for me because we never put the car in the garage. Um, plus this is an, a roller shutter door. It's not a swing open one. Um, but even if it was a swing open one, it would still work for me because I've got a side entrance to the garage. Um, so we just keep all of our rubbish in the garage, clean it out once a year. Um, and this area here sort of came about because um, this was always the area where I put plants that I brought home after I'd bought them. And I used to just put them down here. Um, and this is the area where I tend to do a lot of my big sort of repotting jobs. And anyway, um, one day years ago, about 10 years ago, um, I brought home three rather large plants. I brought a, a small tree and two large shrubs and I got them out the back of the car, popped them down here and I thought right I'll put them in the garden the next day and then the next morning I was having my coffee um, in the conservatory looking at this area and I thought actually those shrubs look really lovely just where they are and this area here was always really just boring um, and a bit messy so it was just really an expanse of block paving um, and as I say we never really used the garage door much so I thought right I'm going to have that bit of ground and I just started putting um, sort of quite biggish shrubs here and 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 then filling it up with other sort of plants that are in season and it is one of my favorite parts of the garden it's like a little sort of nursery it's a to-do area obviously for anybody who puts the car away on a regular basis or even not regular even if you just put the car away once a month this this sort of setup wouldn't work for you because some of these plants are in big tubs and you don't want to be moving those about um but i thought you might be interested so i'll show you the plants that i've bought first I actually went with the intention of buying shade loving plants for my little courtyard area which is through that gate. Um, but I ended up buying all white plants, well all but one. So the first plant that I'll show you is this beautiful begonia and this one is called uh, Mocha White. So almost sort of black leaves on the top and then sort of red underneath. And look at all the beautiful heads on there. And um, this is destined for my white garden at the back of the house. Um, and I just, I'm going to put that on a little table outside um, the conservatory that looks over the white garden. And then I'll be able to see it from the garden and also from the conservatory. And then I bought these plants here. So these ones are New Guinea Impatience White. That's, that's all it says they are. Um, and I remember my mum used to grow lots of these and they're very sort of low maintenance and they just, um, I don't think you even need to deadhead them. I think they deadhead themselves. Um, so I got two for the white garden and then um, I'll put links in the description box below. I have um, a very sunny front border outside the wall of my house. Um, it's only tiny, it's only about 18 inches deep and it's southwest facing, very, very sunny. Um, 
and I've just cut back a lot of daisies there so it's looking a bit flat and a bit bare so I thought these would really um, give it a pop of colour and then I bought these plants here and I know that anything with a silvery leaf like that will love baking hot sun um, so these are curry plants so mm, they do smell of curry <laughs> so I thought they would look nice on the front border um, and then at the garden centre today I found these ones which are beautiful I hope you can see the leaves have come really close up they look sort of almost metallic beautiful and this is convolvulus neuronum um, and I got these these were um, $7.99 for a one litre pot with 50% off and when I got to the till she said oh actually there's 70% off them today so brilliant bargain there so that is also for the front border so if I have sort of this kind of arrangement so I'm really pleased with my plant haul um, one other plant that I got I've already got one of these um, it's uh, scabious this one is called butterfly blue but actually it's more kind of a sort of lilac lavendery color anyway I'm kind of changing my mind about having the got the white garden all white because just by accident I bought one of these which was well I was gifted one of these and it was supposed to be white so I planted it out this year and when it's flowered it is this color it's lavender and I love looking at that in the white garden the lavender against the the white the other white flowers through there it just looks beautiful so I'm thinking actually I might change it to a purple and white or more than white so right those are my new plants so I'll show you the other plants that I have here so this is the area at the front of my garage and um, everything's just planted in tubs but it, from down the drive it just I just think it looks really pretty and it would just be a big barren space of, um, of paving, wouldn't it? So this is just um, a tree that um, has been growing in this pot for years. I think it's just a, a field maple. But at the base of it, in this pot here, this black pot here, um, I've got a clematis. That's, that's the stem of it coming out there and I tend to use very natural supports for my clematis so I like them growing up through trees and things in the garden um, and it's sort of coming to the end this clematis but it's been beautiful and I think it just looks really gorgeous just sort of climbing through in amongst the branches of the, the tree there still got lots of nice buds to come out there and then around the base of the um, clematis in the tub, I've just put all of my heuchera babies. These are all just in pots. I split my um, parent heuchras earlier this year. Um, and these are some of the larger babies that are growing. I've got smaller ones in pots here around the base, around the base of the tree. And then I've just got some pretty shrubs here in pots this is a gorgeous little namisha with the most beautiful perfume some of my succulents which are having a, a summer vacation outside this plant here is mandina um, and such a good foliage plant it's a few years old this so it's quite slow growing when it's in a pot I'm not sure how how fast or big it would grow if I'd put it in the garden but this one has sort of red tipped leaves whereas I have another one over here this is another Nandina 
and this has got very dark foliage so you always get that mix of sort of greens and a contrasting colour. Here's another one. This one's got a really deep, deep red contrasting leaf. So that's that's a really good shrub. And they, they'll survive almost anywhere. I've grown these in um, semi-shade, but they'll also do really well in full sun. So this barrel here, I'll put a link in the description box. Um, it was just an old wooden garden lounger. Um, and I cut it down to size, painted it black and placed it at the top of my drive because I don't know about you, but um, whenever I bought plants, I would bring them back, offload them out the back of the car and sort of just dump them at the top of the drive. Um, and they'd get mixed in with everything else because this tends to be the area where I do sort of... Um, big gardening jobs so if I've got a shrub in a big tub that I need through potting I'll do it in this area because it's just too big to get into the greenhouse so I'm usually sort of quite active in this area and it's usually very messy and so what I found was all my new plants would just sort of get lost in with all the other plants so I thought right I'm going to use this garden lounger because we couldn't use it as a lounger any longer because it was broken um, but I didn't want to just scrap it so I really love it it's one of my favorite things that I've ever made in the garden um, I got these lovely wooden trays from they were just giving them away at Newby Hall um, and then in here I put all the plants that are destined for the garden so here I've got lots of new little baby heucras just in little pots and these are the type of plants I'm talking about so if that was sort of down there in amongst loads of other mess and bags of compost and things um, he would probably be overlooked and I would forget to water him and then I would find the dead little plant and feel terrible so now all the baby plants go in here it's like a bit of a nursery so this one here is an oxalis which my husband bought me at Edinburgh Botanical Gardens a couple of years ago. And he's coming to the, the end um, of the season. So the flowers are beautiful, but the leaves could do with a cut back, but I'll just wait until he's finished flowering. So I do keep a few specimen things. I've got some specimen um, little fir trees there just to give a sort of a bit of structure, a bit of height to it. Um, I've got some grasses here. I've got some beautiful geraniums, which I wasn't sure where else to put them. But I'll leave these geraniums outside a while longer and then probably bring them indoors in about October into the conservatory and overwinter them there because I find that's the, the best place to overwinter my geraniums. I did overwinter them in the greenhouse once, but I lost them all. This is a cutting of a beautiful trailing geranium with its lovely sort of magenta pink flower. It's gorgeous. Um, and I just find that when they're up off the ground and on this display, I can keep an eye on them and it reminds me what I've got and where I'm going to plant it. Um, what have I got here? Oh, so this is a white fairy rose, which... Um, so let's see it's got yeah white fairy and he was in a bargain corner for two pound fifty the other day actually there was two of them that that's a little bit of army major so i've got him and i've got him and they were in tiny little pots uh bone dry um, so i haven't decided where i'm going to put these fairy roses in the garden yet I might put one in the white garden for obvious reasons um, but I certainly didn't want to leave them in that tiny little pot so I've upgraded them given them new compost gave them a feed and they are unrecognizable I should have taken pictures before um, they were really poorly looking and straggly and this one again in a nice big pot there 
And that just means if for whatever reason I don't get them put in the garden this year, they'll be perfectly content in those big pots there. Um, this is an astle bee, which is beautiful. It's doing really well, really pretty again, sort of coming to, to the end now. And at the top of my drive here, I'll show you the big tree that's here. So this tree casts um, shadow over the top of the drive here. So at certain times of the day, I find that it's in sunshine, but for most of the day, it's in semi-shade. So the astle loves it. And it also means that all these little baby plants here, um, if I put these in full sun and say went out for the day, um, they would probably just kizzen up by the end of that day if they, they'd sort of dry out. Um, and I find that keeping them here in this semi-shade condition and because they're heuchera, so they like the shade, um, they do really well. This is a new plant. I'm not sure what the botanical name is because I bought it and it's, it said it was called Scaredy Cat and it's the strongest smelling mint. It's got loads of new foliage at the base there. Um, oh. And the oh, grief so strong when you rub it. And when you rub the leaves, when you touch the leaves, they are so sticky. So I think it's obviously meant to keep your cats away. This is a, a beautiful grass growing in a big pot. It's been growing in a, this big pot for years. Not sure what kind of grass that is, but it's lovely. I think this one here is, I think it's Berberus. It's a lovely bit of colour and a lovely big heuchera there. And then my husband made me this big planter. And if you have a look in, it's just full of freestanding tubs and sometimes I block them up on bricks. But it means that from a distance, as you're sort of coming up the drive here, you can't tell that it's all different tubs. Um, and then I can change the planting seasonally. So that was full of daffodils and tulips earlier in the year. And then it's been full of geraniums. And now it's more sort of green, the foliage, because we're sort of, well, the plants are tired now. They're sort of coming into late summer. This is a beautiful climbing rose, which I dug out of the back garden last year. Um, I think it's just a pink fairy rose. And um, it was in my back garden. I dug it out because I've created a white garden in the back garden. So I planted this in this big recycling tub here. But then obviously, there would have been a big expanse of just bare soil there. So I just stand other plants on top. So I've got another little rose growing here. Again, with no label. It's probably one that I've, I've bought in a poorly corner. And then here is my beautiful crabapple tree, which came from my late mum and dad's house. Oh, it's got some little apples on it there. <laughs> And um, again, you can see I've had a clematis, which is planted in a tub just beside it there, down there. And that has grown all the way up and through the branches and has been beautiful. This tree used to be over there where that maple was with the clematis. And that maple was over here in the corner. So... This finished flowering ages or months ago and I thought it's such a shame that this beautiful clematis is sort of stuck in the corner. So as you come up my drive, that's, that's what you see now. So that I've just swapped them over. I'm happy with that. And then I'll swap him back again 
um, for next spring. But the other day I did a bit of um, housekeeping and I upgraded the pots that these beautiful um, garden auriculars were in. So I bought these last year, bought two of them. Again, they were in much smaller pots um, and I just didn't realise how beautiful they were. I was going to um, buy sort of, is it short auriculars or species auriculars, you know, where you put them in an auricular theatre, um, but I missed the opportunity to buy them. I left it too late in the season. So I've never had auriculars before, went and bought those and oh, I just am absolutely hooked on them. They were beautiful and they lasted for ages. Um, so I'm definitely going to get more of those this year. And then as we come round here, this is just a lovely old piece of branch that I brought down from the hills years and years ago when my grandson was little. He was only about four and he helped me drag it along the, the hill path and up the drive. It used to be a lot bigger, but Monty, my daughter's dog, uh, when he was a puppy, used to love nibbling the ends off the branches. And what I do with this is I have other clematis in pots and I usually put one behind it and then grow the clematis. Just let it grow through um, the branches and it, it looks beautiful. That's a very prickly holly, but um, a nice pop of sort of zingy lime colour at the, the top of the drive and then these are some um, chrysanthemums which I've just given them a good feed they were behind the greenhouse um, so I think a good feed they'll green up and hopefully um, flower in the autumn and so that's it that is the area at the top of my drive. So um, I would highly recommend doing this if you're looking for a bit more planting space, then I would suggest you claim the space as your own. So until next time, as always, thank you so much for watching the video, visiting my garden and visiting the channel. Really do appreciate it. And I'll see you next time. Bye.